The people of ancient Palestine, the land of the Bible, lived mostly in cities or towns. The Jerusalem of today gives us a good clue as to what cities of biblical times might have looked like. They were surrounded by immense stone walls and could be entered only through massive, well-guarded gates. Towns were smaller than cities and were without the benefit of great walls to protect them against enemy attack. Bethlehem, the birthplace of our Savior, is a good example of such. Other towns often were no more than a small group of houses and mud huts. Many of them can still be seen today. There was yet another type of living place. The tent, called the House of Hare, which was home to the wandering nomadic people. In the land of the Bible today, much of the life and customs followed by the dwellers of cities, towns, and houses of Hare has remained practically unchanged since biblical times. The love of bright clothing seems to be a characteristic of people who live in a drab background. And the people of the Bible lands are no exception. Throughout the centuries, each town has retained its own particular style. And possibly no other is more beautiful than that worn by the women of Ramallah. In other towns, too, such colorful garments are a common sight at the well, for it has always been the meeting place for women. Here they go about their important daily chore of providing water for their families. Of all the natural resources in the land of the Bible, none has ever been more precious than water, simply because it is so scarce. The biblical farmer, returning home from his fields, witnessed a scene much like this one. His womenfolk preparing vegetables for the evening meal, chatting, possibly talking over the news they heard that afternoon at the well. lentils, cucumbers, squash, peas, lettuce, onions. All were grown in the biblical garden and are still being raised today. Man in Palestine has been farming and cultivating his land for almost 10,000 years. During the spring months, the reaping of the grain begins. The farmer grabs a handful of grain, then cuts it with a sickle an implement so ancient it dates back to prehistoric times. Once the grain is cut, it must be taken to the threshing floor, and most of the time, camels are used for the carrying. At times, the loads they bear are so great, they present the comical appearance of huge bundles of grain walking about on legs. The threshing floor is usually a large level area where the ground is quite hard. The threshing board is generally about four feet long and on the underside sharp stones are embedded in the wood. It is the action of the board along with the feet of the animals that loosens the kernels. Around and around they go. In biblical times, children considered it great fun to ride the board, and thousands of years later, children of the Bible land still enjoy it. Standing on the sidelines is a substitute waiting to get into action, and a spectator, a little too young to join in the fun. After the boys and the donkeys are finished, the farmer begins winnowing the grain.
as he tosses bunches into the air, the breeze blows away the straw or chaff, letting the heavier kernels of grain fall back to the floor. Later on, it is swept up and put into baskets. From either wheat or barley, bread is made, and there are several favorite ways of baking it. With one, the dough is placed on hot stones in a small oven. But the nomad women prepare it in another manner. Bread has always been a basic necessity for human existence in the Bible lands, and Christ used it as a symbol when he emphasized our need for bread for the soul as well as bread for the body. Perhaps nothing has changed so little as the life led by the nomad. It remains much as it was during the days of the patriarchs. Tents woven from goat's hair, very similar to those we see today, were made by Paul, for tent making was his profession. The nomad is continually on the move, leading his flocks in a never-ending search for grazing lands and water. One of the ancient and interesting customs of these desert wanderers is their hospitality towards strangers. A place to sleep, food, and drink. No traveler arriving in their midst need ask for these. Coffee is the beverage served by the nomad of today. After the coffee beans have been roasted in an iron skillet called a mamasa, they are then ground into a powder. This is done in a receptacle known as a jun. And each man has his own distinctly different rhythmic grinding action. would lay down his life to defend a guest, nowhere else in the world could a weary traveler be safer. The products of a potter are as important to the people today as they were during biblical times. Excavations in the Bible lands have unearthed countless examples of the potter's art. Some of these pieces date back thousands of years. Strange that one of the world's oldest crafts has changed so little during the passage of the centuries. Although most homes are fashioned from either stone or bricks made of clay, the carpenter supplies the doors, window frames, roof beams, and the simple furniture. Jesus was known to the people of Nazareth as the carpenter. And in his little shop, Jesus probably sat on the ground and went about his work much as these men are doing. Thank you. 
Although the roles of potter and carpenter are performed by men, women too have their age-old handicrafts. One of these is the weaving of colorful baskets and mats. And the material used to make these household items comes from the dense thickets growing along the banks of the Jordan River. Nothing else reminds us so much of biblical times and the life of our Savior as the waters of the Sea of Galilee and the fishing nets being dried and mended along its shores. Most of our Lord's disciples came from this region and four of them, Peter, Andrew, James, and John were fishermen. Today, there are few fishing boats on the sea compared to Jesus' time. And the many towns and villages that dotted the shoreline have disappeared. Yet here, as elsewhere throughout the land, we can open the door to the past and look in upon scenes that help us understand better the life and customs of the people who lived in the land of the Bible.